Okay, an experiment with laminating film. Uh, mainly to see the different adhesion properties when using different heat settings uh, to apply it. So I've got a sheet of balsa and I'm going to apply four, three or four strips to it anyway. One sheet of balsa, uh, so I'm maintaining the consistency of the balsa throughout. And I've got just four strips of 38 micron laminating film cut ready to use. And I've got my heat iron here set at the moment, set at low, the low setting. Um, I'm not sure what the temperature is at the low setting. Um, I would say roughly about maybe a, just under 100 degrees. And this setting over to opposite it, uh, that's rough, roughly 150 degrees. So I'll be doing one at low, medium and what I call high. OK, so at the low setting, um, I need to take my time over doing this because at the low setting, it's not melting the glue on the back of the laminating film that quickly. But noticeably, no wrinkles whatsoever. And I'll give it a good pressing down and hopefully be able to do the same for all uh, are the other strips of covering film. So I'm going to turn the temperature up now and wait for that to come up to temperature. Uh, to be fair to the covering iron and the experiment that I'm doing and hopefully what I will be able to show is that the adhesion at the low setting is much less than it is at the high setting um, because laminating film is sort of round about designed to stick around about 150 degrees and certainly that's where you see most of the shrinking start to occur which can of course be a problem when you're applying it to a smooth surface such as balsa um, when if you use the iron to go from one edge to the other if the iron's too hot then it will wrinkle as you're doing it and you you, you possibly can end up with wrinkled laminating film stuck to the balsa a bit of a disaster so if you're using that method of applying the iron and then moving down, then it's much better to go at the lower heat setting because then, as you'll see there, hopefully we we'll get the light glistening off it, you'll see that it is a smooth surface with uh, no wrinkles in it. So the iron should hopefully be up to temperature. I haven't got a uh, my infrared digital thermometer it's not working, unfortunately, so I can't tell you exactly what the temperature is, but we'll give it a go anyway. So now using the medium setting and the shrinking is occurring on the film as I go down, indicating that it is a lot hotter. Just being a little bit more careful to ensure that no wrinkles do occur on there. And again, just twist it round in the light so we can see. Again, no wrinkles. But I can see, just looking at it, that's a much clearer finish than the low heat one there. Much clearer, indicating that the glue has really um, stuck well. Nice curve on the bolster, as you'd expect, as the, the tension has pulled on the film. I'm just going to cut the edges of the film off because I don't want them sticking on the the film I'm going to put to the reverse side and the other thing I'm going to do is mark those test strips up as well to um, show me which one was the low which one was the high setting or, to, or medium setting sorry but to be fair um, you can see the difference between the two there where that one's clearer than that so that was the, the low setting that was the medium setting on there. Let's turn this over in preparation. And again, just let the iron get up to temperature. A method I use, rather than just using the iron to smooth the film out as I'm going down the surface, is I will tack seal, as in ordinary covering film, the laminating film to the surface, and then use a heat gun 
to put heat onto the film. And the one that I use is um, this one here, which is a Hobby King Turner G1, I think. Uh, certainly that's where I got it from anyway. And it's got a nice narrow nozzle, which I can take off, remove, I want a larger area covered. But I find having the point heat there is very good at being able to control the heat in a small area rather than a big heat gun which tends to blast a large area and if you're not careful you can end up with um, a problem of too much heat over too wide an area but the other thing is when you are applying it with a heat gun you need to press the film down onto the surface with a covering iron because you're using pressure on the covering iron that's pressing the glue down or the film down onto the surface and you need to do exactly the same if you're using a heat gun, using a cloth, um, or you can get these mittens, heat-proof mittens, to assist in that. Okay, so the last one is going to be this covering film, and this is with the iron set up to the mic, I call it the high setting. And you yeah, got to be very careful here, because you can see the film wrinkling as I go down through much hotter setting much better setting than as far as I'm concerned anyway than the previous two and again just pressing that down and again a wrinkle free surface on that so I'll just put that as hot there just turn the iron off Okay, so if we look at the the low setting one, first of all, when I peel that back, okay, hopefully you can see that when it's peeled off there, there's not a lot of balsa come off with the covering film, indicating that it hasn't stuck that well to the surface. Now, I've got to be a little bit careful about getting this medium one off because I cut the edge off and I shouldn't have cut it off completely. So I just slip the iron under there, the uh, knife under there, sorry. And again, let's peel that off. Harder to peel off. And again, you can see the top layer of balsa come off. There's more balsa on this one than this one indicating that the adhesion is better. And then finally, and you can hear it, in fact, I've torn the, the film there. Let me just turn it off. Gosh, taking quite a bit of effort to pull this off, including tearing the film. Right, not so easy to see, I would guess, on the camera, the difference between the two but there is a lot more balsa uh, stuck to this, the hot setting, than either the two, which now you can see it in particular there against there and there. So you can see there that the, I think it proves the point that the laminating film to give good adhesion needs the heat round about as i say 150 degrees on my covering iron, i think i should say on my covering iron that one there fairly conclusive proof thank you